Hi everybody, for this week's review, I am going to be reviewing this long line underbust corset made by L'Atelier de la Fleur. So here is the front, the side, the back, and the other side. So some of you may have caught the interview I gave to Mina Lefleur a couple of months ago. If you didn't see it, then I'll link it right up there. And here is the final product of the semi-custom corset that I ordered from her. So this has a base of a standard size 24 corset. However, it has been uh, semi-customized because I asked for a little bit more length in the front to be able to cover my long torso a little bit better. I asked for a high back, as you can see here it comes up very very high even above the wing bone so this like this this is my slouching right now it's amazing <laughs> and also i asked for the waist to be nipped in just a little bit more just another one or two inches the silhouette of this corset i would consider to be a bit of a modern hourglass you can see that it's a little bit rounded through the rib cage nips in at the waist and then it flares out over the hips here so it doesn't cause as much uh, lower rib compression as a conical rib corset would I still find that I'm able to get um, decent reductions in this style of corset and it's very comfortable even if I'm wearing it for many hours. So I believe that Mina's standard size 24 has a rib cage circumference of about 30 inches and an iliac crest circumference of about 32 to 34 inches. So it's actually really close to my natural measurements which is probably why I find it so comfortable. So here's the corset by La Talia de la Fleur laying flat. And from the materials of this, I believe it's three main layers. The fashion fabric is this silk Chinese brocade. And when you actually feel the difference between the silk brocade and the poly brocade, it is like night and day. They behave so differently and this is just so lush. <laughs> and um, it has an interlining of herringbone cotille. And then the lining here is this really nice soft cotton fabric. And Mina says that this is a special type of fabric that always feels sort of cool in temperature to the touch. And I'm inclined to agree, it actually does feel kind of cool in both like an awesome way and a temperature way. And if you actually look here, you see that her emblem is stamped, her logo is stamped. So you don't actually have an itchy tag in the back of the corset or on the inside that's irritating you. I think this is a really nice touch. I'm just going to keep this open for a second so you can clearly see the panels. I believe this is a five panel pattern. It might be a six panel pattern actually though. So you can see here one, two, three, four, five. Um, but it goes around my curves extremely well. As you can see that it's, it's not even wanting to lay flat. It makes people shapes as my friend Amber says. So for the actual construction or the assembly of this, I believe that the uh, silk fabric was flat lined or roll pinned to the cotille and assembled and then uh, external boning channels were laid down. On the inside, you can see that the lining is actually floating. It's very smooth against the skin. And for the waist tape, there is one present. I'm not sure if you can see the outline through uh, the, the thin liner here, but it's one inch wide and it's going through all the panels of the corset. Obviously it's sandwiched between the layers so you don't feel it against your skin. I absolutely love the binding on this corset. It is made from bias strips of the same matching pink satin that these um, external boning channels are made out of. And you can see that it's machine stitched on the outside, but then on the underside, it is hand finished. So you don't actually see any seams at all through the inside or the outside because it's done with an invisible stitch here. And you can see that even the edges are just done so neatly. And while I'm here with a close-up, I can show you the flossing here. So I let Mina have a little bit of an artistic license with this uh, flossing. I didn't request any specific shape or anything. I was just like, yeah, go nuts. <laughs> and I really like how it turned out because it's so different. And when I looked at it a little bit closer, it almost looks like a T4 bacteriophage, which is basically a virus that infects bacteria. So I think, I think it's really awesome that I get to incorporate my biochemistry background in this corset and kind of like accidentally pay homage to it. So I really like how it turned out. It actually has more significance than I thought it would. I did not request to have any modesty panel in the back because I wanted it to more or less close on my body. But there is a stiffened modesty placket underneath the busk here. It actually has two bones in here and it is very, very stiff. It keeps the front quite flat, which I like.
The busk of this corset is 12 and a half inches long. It's a standard flexible busk, half an inch on each side, and it has six pins and loops on it with the two bottom most pins and loops being a little bit closer to each other to uh, control a little bit more of the belly. Now this actually was my busk and I had special ordered it in and then sent it to Mina to be incorporated into this specific corset because I thought that a matte black busk would go really well with the um, black theme of this corset and you can also see that uh, the grommets in the back are black as well. This corset is rather heavily boned. It has a total of 24 bones in here, not including the busk. So on each side in these external boning channels are uh, spiral steel bones, I believe quarter inch wide. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there is barely an inch anywhere around the waist here that doesn't have a bone here, which is great for support. Also, there are two bones sandwiching uh, the grommets here in the back. And then underneath the busk here, there are two bones in this uh, modesty placket. And here's a close-up of the grommets in the back. And like I said before, they're finished in a sort of black, so it, it matches the rest of the hardware of this corset, which I really appreciate. Um, there are th a total of 34 of them, 17 on each side, because it has a, a very high back in here. Um, they're equidistantly spaced, even around the waist here, about an inch apart. I find that they have a lot of control. Uh, none of them are ripping out or fraying in any way. They're holding very fast. And here's a close-up of the back of the grommets, and uh, I, I can't really complain about them. They're holding in very nicely. Very, very few splits to these uh, grommets. They don't catch on the laces at all. The washer is nice and wide. I don't see the fabric coming away at all. And the, are, and the ends of them are even finished in these beautiful silver aglets. So I lied, not all of the hardware is black, but I mean, when the corset is pretty much closed, you don't even see the silver. I think it's a really nice touch though. Um, it just keeps the ends from fraying and whatnot. And even the laces are a bit atypical. There is nothing ordinary about Mina's corsets at all. And these laces, they're actually made from nylon. They're extremely strong, so they won't um, break like cotton, but they don't actually have any stretch to them the way that some other nylon or polyester uh, laces do. The price of one of Mina's standard size long line underbust corsets starts at $375 Canadian. And if you wanted a complete recreation of this style corset that I'm wearing right now, it is $565. This concludes my review of my semi-custom longline underbust corset made by L'Atelier de la Fleur. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it informative. If you did, then please remember to click that like button. It helps support my channel. And if you have any comments or questions about this corset or about L'Atelier de la Fleur in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to get back to you or forward your questions to Mina. And I will see you after the weekend for another video. Bye.